While tennis is considered to be one of the most sophisticated games in the world, it has no shortage of absurd moments. There are plenty of match-fixing scams, fist fights, enraged fans, and other crazy incidents that make this sport way more exciting than it already is. In this video, we'll be showing you some of the wildest stories from the history of this sport. Let's dive right in. Starting off with the match-fixing that shocked the world. Match fixing is certainly a horrible reality that not only ruins the reputation of the player involved, but puts into question every match the player has ever been a part of. So with such high stakes involved, the punishment for this act is also quite severe. As a tennis fan, you might not have heard of Austrian player Daniel Kollerer, and there's a reason why. In 2010, he was found guilty of committing one of the biggest match fixing crimes ever seen in the tennis world. His career ended before it could have even taken off. By 2009, he had gotten a career-high ranking of 55 in the whole world. But it all went downhill from there, when he was found guilty of three violations of the anti-corruption program in tennis. The violations happened sometime between October 2009 to July 2010. No player had ever been given a lifetime ban in tennis before, but Daniel Kohlerer had to be the first one. He received a lifetime ban from playing professional tennis from the Tennis Integrity Unit, TIU. This meant that he couldn't participate in any match organized by an authorizing body in professional tennis. On top of that, he also had to pay a fine of $100,000. In his short-lived career, Daniel only managed to make $750,000 through his wins. He later on confessed that he had used his personal website to bet on other tennis matches and also commit match-fixing himself. For all of these crimes, the now 39-year-old is known to be the most hated man in tennis. Moving on to an unfortunate choking accident. It's easy to get riled up during an intense tennis match. A little bit of name calling and roasting is also a common thing between two opponents, and sometimes might even lead to some healthy competition. But what happens when that goes too far? Well, that's what happened at an Austrian league match in Kitzbühel, when the Austrian player Stefan Kubek was playing against none other than Daniel Kollerer. This was before Daniel was banned from a professional tennis tennis course. Everything was going normally between the two until they reached the second set, where Daniel was down 3-1. to one. Apparently, Kubek was already angry at his opponent and told him he was going to eat him. Kollerer claimed that he didn't respond, and the next thing he knew, Kubek was at his throat trying to choke him and also repeatedly telling him not to use a homophobic slur against him. Kollerer swore that he didn't say anything to him, but still ended up getting disqualified. This wasn't the first time Kubek was caught doing something crazy at a tennis match. Back in 2000, at a Roland Garros match, the then 23-year-old player attacked his opponent, the Hungarian player Attila Savolt. About to lose the third set, he lost his temper and threw his ball at his opponent, which ended up hitting a poor ball boy. He ended up getting disqualified, the first person to get expelled from a major Grand Slam match. Let's take a look at the second person to get disqualified from a major Grand Slam event. Since it happened quite recently, you you'd know who we're talking about. The king of controversy in tennis these days is the 21-time Grand Slam winner, Novak Djokovic. We think it all began back in 2020, when the first controversy rolled in. While playing in round 16 of the US Open 2020, Djokovic was facing Spain's Pablo Carreno Busta. It was turning out to be a nail-biter of a first set, with both players playing equally well. That's until Pablo broke on Novak's serve, and the Serbian player realized that the match was slipping from his hands. That's when, in frustration, he hit a stray ball into the empty stands. But the ball ended up hitting a poor lineswoman right in the throat. That's gotta hurt. She collapsed instantly, and Novak immediately rushed to check on her. But the damage had already been done. After a lengthy discussion with the umpire, Pablo was named the default winner of the match. This is because, well, in the point penalty schedule, the referee could announce the default winner if the player violated any of the codes of conduct. Novak got disqualified qualified and also ended up paying $250,000 as a fine, which was basically deducted from all the earnings he had made in the tournament until then. The Serb issued an apology on his Instagram again, claiming that it was unintentional and that he regretted it instantly. He also claimed that he wanted to work on himself and his temper after this whole episode. Up next is the infamous Indian Wells controversy. When you hear the word controversy in tennis, you can't help but think of what happened to the Williams sisters back in 2001. 
one, it has all the makings of controversy, with a careless rumor at its center and a lifetime of trauma that followed the people involved. In 2001, Serena Williams and her sister Venus Williams were set to have a face-off in the semi-finals of the Indian Wells Masters Series tournament. Crowds were gathered to see the two sisters finally clash against each other. The match was also set to be broadcast live on ESPN2. But just four minutes before the players were supposed to appear on the court, Venus Williams pulled out of the match due to an injury. Serena, then by default, went on to the final of the tournament. Fans were disappointed to say the least. They booed the two sisters and left in anger. A rumor started to float around that there was match fixing involved, and that Venus wasn't really injured at all. It was a plan made by their father, Richard Williams, to make sure Serena won. There was no evidence to support this rumor, though. On the day of the final, when Serena and her father Richard showed up on the court, they were both booed by the crowd. Richard Williams even stated that many people shouted racist remarks at him. The younger Williams had to suffer the booing throughout her final against Kim Klijsters. The crowd would even cheer on all of her unforced errors and mistakes. Despite all of that, Serena still ended up winning the final and the tournament. The two sisters then boycotted the tournament for over 14 years. Following up with Andre Agassi's shocking revelations. No one is a stranger to the dynamic former world number one, Andre Agassi. The eight-time Grand Slam winner was at the peak of his career in the 90s, but in 1997, he took a huge blow due to a wrist injury. He could only play about 24 matches that year. But what made the whole thing even worse was when he failed a drug test that put his career on hold for a while. It was only when he submitted a letter to the ATP claiming that a friend of his had spiked his drink before the test, which is why he failed it. The ATP believed that story and let him off with just a warning. The real controversy erupted years later, in 2009, when Agassi published his autobiography, Open. In the book, he confessed that he had been using crystal meth throughout 1997. The story he told to the ATP was all made up, and he was deep into recreational drug abuse abuse during that point in his life. While this revelation was meant to be a confession of sorts and him trying to free himself of the guilt of lying, it still ended up disgracing his name. But the whole thing has died down now, and Agassi is in everyone's good books again. Finally, the tragic incident changed the course of an iconic player's career. This last one is just too heartbreaking to be called a controversy, but it had to be included in our list because of the shockwaves it created around the tennis community. Throughout the 80s, the rivalry between between Yugoslavia's Monica Seles and Germany's Steffi Graf was the one to watch. The two shared an intense rivalry that would draw a lot of crowds and reporters. Monica Seles, being just a teenager, had dethroned Steff Graf for the number one spot, and in just a couple of seasons, had won a total of nine Grand Slam titles, so she was clearly at the height of her career. But all of that changed in April 1993, when Monica was stabbed at one of her matches in Hamburg. A Steffi Graf fan stabbed her in the back while she was cooling off in between breaks. While the injury was only superficial, it gave Monica a lifetime of trauma. She couldn't regain her past self since then, and only managed to win one Grand Slam title afterward. That's a wrap for this video. Any controversy we left out? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!